So today we're going to talk all about solder, how to get the best solder joints, what flux to use, what type of solder to use to get really great effects with copper foil work and with traditional lead work. There's lots of people asking lots of questions about it and lots of people struggle. And when you start out and it's really difficult to hold a soldering iron properly and you're never quite sure how long to hold the soldering iron on for, how hot it needs to be, what a good solder joint looks like, all of those good things we're gonna to cover today starting right now. If you're new here, make sure to hit that like button and join the channel for lots more inspirational videos. And remember, everything we mentioned in this video, you can find linked in the description below. So let's jump into it. You may be new to stained glass and are experimenting for the first time with copper foil work or leaded glass work to make Tiffany lamps or to make leaded glass windows. And you come up against this problem. The solder doesn't adhere to the copper foil or it doesn't adhere to the lead and you get really messy joints. You might have this problem where the solder is melting the lead or melting the copper foil. Again, a real problem if you're wanting to get really nice solder joints. So let's solve these problems for you now. And the way we start is with flux. What's flux and why do we need it? Well, flux comes in a variety of shapes and sizes, as a candle, as a liquid, and as a paste and is used to help solder make a good bond to the lead or copper that you're working on. It does this by cleaning up the solder joint and helping to make for a good solid bond between the metal and the solder. As you can see here, the solder is not adhering to the copper at all. It's simply sitting on the surface and not uh, bonding with it in any way. It's a really poor connection. So when we apply flux, you can see the copper is immediately cleaning itself up. It's a lot brighter there, and that's getting rid of the oxidization, which allows for the solder to bond really well with the copper foil, and it will bond really well with lead as well as copper foil. So applying flux to your joints, whether it's copper foil work or lead work, allows you to get a really nice bonding connection between the solder and the base metal. Again, with lead, applying a flux, in this instance, it's a paste flux to the solder and holding the soldering iron for a couple of seconds, you get a lovely solder joint. A nice flat button solder joint is ideally what we're looking for. So I'm using two different types of flux today to see which one is best. This strange white stick is called a tallow candle, a traditional flux used here in the UK. And can you guess what it's made from? Sheep fat. Yeah, sheep fat, who would have thought? The second flux I'm using is a plumber's paste used to fix copper piping together. The solder I'm using is called a 6040 blowpipe solder. It's made up of 60% tin and 40% lead and is a great all-rounder and can be used in lots of applications, including lead work and copper foil work. It has a melting point of 183 degrees centigrade and stays molten longer than 50-50 solder, which is half lead and half tin, and has a higher melting point of 214 degrees centigrade. What that means in practice is the 6040 solder flows better than the 5050 solder at a lower temperature and stays molten longer. I'm using an air filtration system to extract the fumes from the soldering area, as well as wearing a P3 type face mask. The extractor I'm using is an Extract 500 dust and fume extractor with a movable funnel to catch the solder fumes. It's often thought solder fumes are molten solder, but in fact the fumes are made up of burned flux, as the soldering irons are not hot enough to boil the solder and turn it into a gas. The flux can release a concoction of bad chemicals, however, which have a cumulative effect on your lungs over time, including possible occupational asthma, headaches and dizziness, so it's really important to protect yourself from breathing it in. Never eat or drink when you're soldering and always wash your hands before eating. So let's put this into practice. What I very often do is get some wire wool like this, cut it into a small section and clean my lead before I apply solder. The reason for that is lead does oxidize on its own and flux sometimes by itself isn't, it doesn't create a good enough bond. So I apply 
uh, in this case, sheep fat to the joint. Um, I'm also using the paste as an alternative just to show you that both types of fluxes work really well. Using a little brush, uh, we apply paste to the joints, very small amounts of paste. You really don't re need very much at all, but that helps to clean up the joints. And I'm using a Weller 100 watt soldering iron W101D. You can use gas, you can use electric, uh, whatever is convenient. I'm using a number seven chisel tip today, seven millimeter tip. It's a very good standard size tip for most soldering applications, um, but you can use larger tips or smaller tips if you prefer. I am also using a tip cleaner uh, such as this, uh, which is actually a brass wool uh, which is really useful and i'll link leave links in the description below for where you can get these products as well the tip cleaner is really useful it's it's a little container like this which keeps the tip shiny and clean which is always helpful before you actually apply the solder to the soldering iron during the leading up process you might come across uh, a gap between the leads don't be tempted to try and fill that with solder a much better solution is to make a little lead flange by cutting a length of lead to fill the gap um, and then cutting the lead in half so that it's just the top T section of the lead that you use like this and you slot it into the gap filling the gap between the pieces of lead. You can then put your flux all over that repair and solder it up and it's a much better solution than trying to smear a gap with lots of solder it never really works well and again when you're holding the soldering iron in place you can hold it in for a couple of seconds and that really is all you need to get a nice flat solder joint if you're smearing the solder around the joint like butter on toast you're really applying too much solder also if you've got a problem with a solder joint leave it let it cool down go on to other solder joints and come back to it if you try to keep working with an existing solder joint it ends up getting so hot all the solder melts and goes underneath the panel what you want at the end of the day is nice flat solder joints like this if you're using tallow candle you have to wire brush the joints because there's a bit of fat that's left on the joints obviously that doesn't happen if you're using paste so there we have it, how to get great soldering results every time. And if you found value in today's video, check out this video next. Thanks again for watching. Remember to leave comments and suggestions for future videos. Join the channel and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.